of our hearts and minds. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we delve deep into Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, which, which is probably a scene that most of you at least recognize because it's Moses with the burning bush, right? But the, to get to this point, though, we have to understand where Moses came from, right? Does anybody know the, the, the story of Moses? I'm going to give you a snippet of it here real quick. The Reader's Digest version of Moses, right? Moses was born in Egypt after a new king had come who did not know Joseph. Right? So I'm not going to go into who Joseph is. If you don't know who Joseph is, come ask me later. We can talk about it. Right? Joseph got the Israelites into Egypt and got them in good standing. But then this new Pharaoh came in who didn't know Joseph. So now, all of a sudden, this Pharaoh looks out and sees all these Israelites and thinks, i got to do something because they're going to overrun us. They're going to take us over. So he enslaves the Israelites and makes them to, to be slaves for Egypt. So Moses is born during a time when midwives are told to kill Israelite boys. If they're helping a mother have their child and it comes out as a boy, they are supposed to kill that child instantly. But midwives are not doing this. And so Moses lives, and his mother hides him for a while. And then it gets to a point that she can't hide him anymore, she puts him in a basket and sends him down the Nile with his sister watching him all the way. And who finds Moses in the basket? Pharaoh's daughter. And she lifts him up out of, well, she doesn't actually lift him up out of the river. I'm sure she has slaves go down and pick up the basket and pull it up out of the river. And then there's a child in there. And she names this child Moses because Moses means drawn up. Right? She drew him up out of the river. So therefore, Moses is called Moses because she drew him up out of the river. And Moses' sister sees this, goes up to Pharaoh's daughter and says, I know a woman who can take care of him. Just happens to be his mother. So she gets to go back home and live with his mother. But he grows up as the son of Pharaoh and has a prominent place in the kingdom. But then what happens? He gets upset with one of the Roman soldiers who's dealing harshly with an Israelite. And Moses kills this, Ro this Egyptian. I said Roman. Egyptian. We're not to Rome yet. We're, actually, we're still in Egypt. So Moses kills this Egyptian soldier. And so he has to flee. And here we find Moses in a foreign country with his father-in-law, who is the priest of Midian, right? Yes. And he is keeping watch over the sheep. And we get to our story. Moses is out tending the sheep, and he sees this bush burning. And he stops for a moment, long enough to know that it's not being consumed. How long would that take, actually? How long would it take for you to see a bush burning, look at it, and know that it's not actually burning? A couple minutes, maybe. A couple minutes. But my question is, because it's really interesting in our reading today, right? Because the bush was burning, Moses is going about his business, he notices the bush, he stops, he looks, he notices it's not burning, he thinks, huh, maybe I should go and take a look at this. And he goes over and takes a look at it. And when God saw that Moses had diverted his attention to the bush, God spoke to Moses. So my question is, how long was the bush burning? <laughs> as long as it took. We don't know how long the bush was burning. The bush could have been burning forever. Why didn't somebody else see the burning bush? Maybe they didn't notice it. Maybe it wasn't visible to somebody else. Because we always want to think, right? When I read this passage, the first thing that I think about when I read this passage is, why doesn't God make a bush burn for me? Maybe he has and I just missed it. Maybe I wouldn't notice a burning bush like Moses would. But Moses turns to the bush, and God calls out to Moses from the bush and says, Moses, Moses, and he says, here I am. And God says, don't come any closer, take off your shoes, because the ground on which you're standing is holy, because I'm here with you. And then God goes into a bunch of I statements, right? This is a really cool story. Because God comes down from heaven, burns in a bush, and says to, to Moses, 
I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face from, from the bush now because he didn't want to look on God. And then God continues, right? I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and hungry, honey, to a country of the Canaanites with all those people. I have seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Why is this important for us? To know that a long, long time ago, a shepherd saw a burning bush and met God there. It has to do with what I told the kids a little bit earlier, and we'll get to that just a little bit later too. With what happens here, with who we are as God's people. Right? Because who are the Israelites? They are God's chosen people. They are the people of the covenant. They are the people that God said that he would always be with them, right? They are God's chosen, beloved people. And God has promised that he's always going to be there, and he's always going to hear them, and that he's always going to take care of them. And this right here proves that, right? They were sent off to Israel because of, of a, 11 brothers thinking they were getting rid of the one brother that was causing them all their problems and those 11 brothers actually set up Israel to be set into a good place for many years to come. But then things happened and God came back and said, I don't know what went on here, but I need to help my people again. And so he comes to Moses and he speaks to him through a bush because he knows who Moses is. Moses is a criminal who killed a man and ran away. But he's also one of God's chosen people. So God came to him and spoke to him. And he said, this is what I know. And he said, all of these things are happening. And so come, come here. And I am going to send you. Right? That's what he says. He says, after all these things, I know what's happening in Egypt, what they're doing to them. So come. I will send you to Pharaoh so that you can bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I know who you are. And I know what you've done, but I need you to do something for me. So come. I need you to go back to Egypt. Because the guy that's doing all of this stuff is your brother. Right? Because the old Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph had passed by this point. And the new Pharaoh was the brother that Moses had grown up with in the palace in Egypt. He was the perfect person to go and to speak for God. So God said, regardless of anything that's happened, regardless of all of that, I need you to help me. So he came to Moses in a bush and he said, I've seen all of these things, so come with me. I'm going to help you and prepare you to go back. And what does Moses say? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? This is the first time out of four or five, that Moses will balk at what God is trying to get him to do. Right? Because Moses, at some point we find out in the near future when he's talking to God about this, that Moses has a speech impediment of some sort. Because he says to God that he can't speak well. We don't know what that means. Did Moses stutter? Did he, I mean, what, it doesn't really matter. Moses thought that he wasn't able, that he wasn't, that he wasn't good enough to go for God. But God said, God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign. Once you've done all of this, you're going to come right back to this spot, and you're going to worship me here. Right? God promised the Israelites that he was always going to be with them. And he was. Even when they were in slavery in Egypt, even when they were being held down, God was there and he knew what was going on. And he came to Moses and he said, Moses, I need you to go and do this thing for me. And Moses said, I'm not going to be able to do that. Who, who am I to go do that? And what did God say? I'm always going to be with you. I'm always going to be there. So then Moses balks again. Right? What's the next question Moses asks? Okay, say, say God, say I go, I go for you. All right, I'm going to say, if, say I go. And the Israelites say, who sent you? 
The God of your God, who's, and what is God's name? How do I know that God actually sent you? Do you actually know God's name? Do we actually know God's name? Kind of. It sets us up for a joke. A couple jokes, actually. What is God's name? <laughs> Nate knows my joke. Right, you guys played, I love the song in the garden. It's a beautiful song. I've heard it done so many different ways. And every time I hear it, it's a, one, it's a beautiful song. I've heard it played by orchestras. I've heard it played by, by a flute and a piano this morning, very beautifully. I've heard it played by rock bands. And every time it's a beautiful song. But it always reminds me of that joke. What's God's name? Andy. Andy. Because you get to the chorus, and right, what is the chorus of, he walks with me? Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me, Andy tells me I am his own, right? Come on, that's funny. <laughs> what else is God's name? Howard? Our Father? Uh, art and Howard, right? Our Father, who art in heaven, Howard be thy name. All right, that one's not quite as funny, but, all right. What is God's name, though? It's not Andy, it's not Art, it's not Howard. Actually, if you read this passage, you get, God said, my name is, I am who I am, right? If, you, if we look at the, can I have the, if we look at the text up here, right? There's this word right here, the Lord. Notice how that's all in all caps. It's all small capital letters. That actually is the tetragrammatron, the, the name of God. Because Israelites would never actually speak the name of God. And we'll get to that next week when we get to the Ten Commandments about how you should never use the name of the Lord your God in vain. Which means we do use the name of God, but we don't use it in vain. So there's a right, right way to use it and a, not, and a not right way to use it. But the Israelites would never say it simply so that they would never have to worry about not using the name in vain. But we don't actually know what God's name is. And here we got this, this weirdness of I am who I am. And actually this, this can't really be translated that way. It can be, but it can also be I am who I am. I am who I will be. I will be who I will be. But what's the point of us actually getting God's name? Is it so that we know what the name of God is and so that we can call him by name? What is needed in life? I talked about this on Wednesday night with the Confirmation youth and their parents. About how the Ten Commandments were, ten commandments were given to us for a specific reason. And they were given to us to help us to live in Say it louder. Relationships. Right? That's why we need names. But names only get us so far, right? I can know your name, but does that mean that I know everything about you? And you can know my name, but do you know everything about me? No. But that's a starting point for us to start a relationship. It's a starting point for us to understand who each other is. It's a starting point for us to grow and to know and to understand each other. Right? I said earlier that Benjamin was going to come up here in a little bit and I'm going to get him wet with water. <laughs> Not quite getting there yet. With water. <laughs> right? Because God is going to do something here, right? It's not about this water. It's not about the words that I say. It's about what God does in this, name, in this time and place. It's about God saying, Benjamin, I've seen you and I know you and I know who you are. And I know what's going to be. And I want to be a part of that. And because of that, I make you my own. God gives us a name. And God calls us by that name each and every day of our lives. And God walks with us and is always there. That's what the burning bush is about. That's what Moses getting God's name is about. It's about having a relationship with a father and a, and a God who loves us beyond all imagination, is willing to go to the ends of the earth and do things that we couldn't possibly imagine to make sure that we understand exactly how much God loves us. That's what it's about. 
It's about living in and through what God has promised to do for each and every one of us every day of our lives. About understanding that God is always with us and that he's never going to leave us and he's never going to forsake us. Bless you. That he's always going to see us through the troubled times ahead and to be there to celebrate us in the joy, with us in the joyous times. So remember your name and remember to always ask God to be there because he already is. And remember to thank God for the love that he's shown to you and take that love and give it to everyone in the world because God will fill your cup again and he'll make it overflow because that's how much God loves each and every one of us.